So it's rebuild time. Um, I'm just going to spend a little bit of time talking about why I've chosen the parts I've chosen. Uh, starting with the piston. So this is the piston I've chose. And you can see the con rod is nice and free to swing like a pendulum. However, the other piston, I don't know if you can actually see this, but it stops very quickly. It's actually quite gritty. So I'd suggest this bearing's not really good in there. Also, there's a bit of damage on the crown. So I'm not going to use that one. Um, I have got this one. This one's all good. And I've got two new piston rings to put on that. So that's the one I'm using. For the cranks, you'll obviously see in the last video, I destroyed the bearing um, on one of the cranks. So that means I'm stuck with this one. Um, cylinder. Um, it's obviously plated, so there's not a lot you can do with the plating's damaged. Um, this is the one I took apart. This one is better condition than the other one, and I'll put a picture to show you, but there's two areas of the plating that's actually damaged on this one, so I'll not be using this one. Um, head. So the head I need to use is the original engine head. Um, two reasons. Uh, the one I stripped down has bent fins, and also the spark plug hole has damaged threads. So I won't be using this, however, I will be using the decompressor valve from this head. Um, as for the clutch components, it is quite obvious. This one's quite rusty and horrible, and I'm actually missing one of the shoes on this one. So these will be binned as well, although I might keep that because this clutch is okay on the inside. Definitely not that bit. The key parts, um, or the main reason I stripped down this engine, was because um, it didn't run very well. I had spark, kind of, and I had fuel, but there was something not right. And when I actually stripped it down, I realised I didn't have to um, use this special, I can't see it, special flywheel removal tool. And that was because this plate came off too easily and I think it was, uh, there was something that was loose and uh, what that had caused is, uh, call this a flywheel, it's got the magnets in, this had skipped over the breaker and it actually um, damaged the dimples here and the holes here. I'll uh, zoom in and show you what I mean. So I'm hoping you can make out what I'm trying to show you here. These two dimples here are meant to locate in these two holes here, but this item has actually, or this item has slipped and caused damage to both the holes. You can see that uh, slice of metal that's been taken out. So this doesn't really locate very well in there. It should be a nice solid location, but very little force you can get it to spin. So I can't use those two bits. The other one, those holes are still nice and two pins are nice so that should locate nicely, which it does. So the first part I'm going to put together is I've got to put the crank back into this half of the crank case. And to do that Firstly, don't forget to put the needle roller in there and that little shim there. Um, I'm then going to put this part in the freezer and this part in the oven. And hopefully the uh, two parts will just slide together. Come on, get on with it. I'm waiting for my crank. Okay, so we removed the bearing. I thought I'd do a little video of how to put the bearing, a new bearing back on. So we've got the crank in the freezer and the bearing is in the oven. The bearings are about 125 degrees C and they've been in there about 10 minutes. So I'm going to take the crank out first. And you need to be quick with the next bit. So you ready? It needs to go on in one go. Yes, straight in there. That's getting hot, it's getting hot. There. 
Okay, so the crank went in very nicely. Um, before I forget, I've got to put that little countersunk screw in this hole back here just to retain that bearing. Um, so I'm going to do that and I'm also going to lock tight it in. Um, it's actually still too hot probably, so I'm going to let that cool down. The next part after that will be to put this plate back on. I'm just screwing up this uh, first coil. This is the um, lighting coil. So you can see I've got these two little um, tabs here. Make sure they're overlapped. And then while you've still got it loose, just push it so it butts up against its uh, stops on the bottom. That hopefully should locate it. Okay, so that's located. It actually uh, butts up to this bit down here, so it should line up there. Uh, now we've got that in place, we'll tighten them fully and then knock over these tabs. Okay, so I'm happy with that one. I'll now mount the other one. Just pay attention to how the cables are routed. So before I mount this, I've just compared this one with the other unit here, and I can see that uh, the cable for the condenser needs to be routed underneath there. So it's probably best to get that in first. Show you how that cable goes, it also goes under here as well, so it's important to get it in the right place. So, this cable is also quite important to get routed correctly. You can see this kink here that follows the same line as the red one. The screw that goes in here doesn't have a tab washer because there's already a copper washer on this one which uh, is joined to the wire underneath there. So before we tighten these up fully, just to make sure it's correctly positioned here and here. And a little bit of force just to push it into the right place. Make sure one of the cables are trapped, which they're not. There we go, that's nice. You can see these two wires are together and they belong together on the points. Okay, they're nice and tight. These tab washers again. No easy way to do this while recording. There we go, that's both coils in. I think now it's time to put the points in. So before I get carried away, it's important that you don't forget this little bit. Focus. There you go. That's a little cam which allows you to adjust the points. 
that goes down in this hole here. Let's get those points. So before we put these points back in, it's uh, obviously worth just cleaning out the contacts there. So I've got a bit of emery paper, folded in half. I can just go forward and backwards on that. Hopefully, yeah, that looks quite good. Can't really see the other one. Yeah, that looks okay. Before I put the points back in, you want to make sure the three cables are located just inside here. Um, and then hopefully you can slot the points in. That pin obviously has to go down that hole and that slot there is for the adjuster. There we go. So if you've put the cables in the right place they should fall naturally to that terminal there. So I'll just tighten up the points but not fully so I can still adjust it and then we'll put the uh, wires in place. So at this point you can actually set the contact breaker gap and it should be 0.35 millimeters. So to do that I've temporarily fitted the cam back on and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the feeler gauge in there. I've uh, removed it from the rest of the pack to make it easy to work with. I'm going to make it nice and tight. So I go that way. That's nice and tight now. And it's being held there. So to make it loose I'm going to go very slow the other way until it starts to move there. That means it's starting to go slack. It's still a bit tight. Let's go a bit further. There. So that I would say is perfect. Before we uh, say this is complete though we then nip that up and make sure it doesn't move while we nip that up. Yeah that's still good. So tighten that up fully. One last check. It's looking good to me. So now the points are set I can take this cam off. I need to put that back on correctly in the right position when I've got the cylinder back on. So the next part I'm going to do is install the piston rings back onto the piston. Uh, nothing really special here. Uh, you can see that location pin there. That should obviously tie up with the uh, gap and you can also see the ends of the rings are profiled to fit next to that pin so I don't put it upside down. Having said that, the one here has to be mounted the other way up. So all I'm doing is sliding them on by hand. This one actually has to go in the bottom groove so I'll have to jump over again. There we go, like that. Now the top ring. There we go. So that's the rings installed. So the next part is to put the piston back in. Um, but before I can put the con rod back on to the big end, I've got to uh, build up the bearing. So the first thing to do is get the cage and slot that on and then I've got a little dollop of grease here which is going to allow me to put all the uh, rollers in but before you put the rollers in you've got to put one of these washers over like so and the rollers a 
Okay, that should be enough grease. Let's try and get these rollers in without dropping them. Should be 12. Don't know if I'll do this first attempt, but I'll give it a go. Okay, so that's all the rollers stuck back in position with grease. And now I'll slot the conrod back on. Um, the piston isn't actually symmetrical, you've got this hole here which lines up with one of the transfer ports in the liner. So that should be to this side. Come on, we can do this. Maybe we can't. Hey, there we go. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yep, still got 12. Before we forget, the other washer should go there. Then this special washer, you have to line up with the slot. Like so, and then we can put that circlip on. go. So that feels nice and smooth still. That's good. What's next? Let's put this half back on. So I've had to cut new paper gaskets myself. This is uh, proper gasket paper. It's uh, 0.15 millimeters thick and sometimes the easiest way to uh, do this is just put a little smear of grease in a few places so it sticks to the surface while you're assembling everything. And put it the right way around. Ah. There we go, happy with that. Now put the cover back on. Okay, so I'm happy that's on, but I'm not going to do these up tight at the moment until I've got the cylinder back on because it's more important that these two faces between the front and the back halves of the crankcase are level and there's a little bit of movement in that I don't know yeah you can see that so I want to get the cylinder black on first and tightened up to align these two surfaces so I'm now going to slide the cylinder over the piston I've uh, stuck the gasket onto the bottom of the cylinder and I've lubricated the uh, rings with some fresh oil. So this needs to go on like so but we need to make sure these rings go in correctly. So squeeze on the sides and make sure it's lined up. One in that second one lined up. I can't. Come on. Come on. There we go. You can see the gap. I'll just zoom in. You can see there isn't much gap where the piston ring joins. Up 
but that is in. Last check, make sure the gasket's in place. Yes, it is. Zoom out. And that should go on. So I'm just going to put those four bolts in there to hold everything in place. So these are nearly tight, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten the two ones here first to uh, get it in position. Then if I tighten these two back ones, that should pull this back plate into position. Okay, so now I can go ahead and tighten all of these up and the cylinder up. Okay, so I've got to the important bit. Because I've removed this contact breaker cam, I need to retime the whole engine. So what I've done is I've pushed that cam back on, but it is still free to move. But there's a bit of resistance because of the taper on the shaft. So the first thing you've got to do is work out where top dead centre is. Now the instructions suggest use a vernier, a measure at the top of the piston. Um, but I have lost my vernier so I've got a dial test indicator which will probably be easier I think. So I'm using the uh, outer cover just to turn the engine over and you can see that is going up. I'm turning the engine clockwise. Sorry, no, turning the engine anti-clockwise and you can see I've put the top dead centre at the zero mark at the top here. So then what it suggests you have to do is from that position of top dead centre you need to go before top dead centre at one and a half millimetres down the bore. So if I turn this clockwise this time that's gone half a mil, one mil, one and a half millimetres down the bore. Now at that point or as you approach that point a piece of tissue paper placed in the uh, breakers should open. So I've forgotten to put this in there, so bear with me. So put that in there. Right. So top dead centre, come back one and a half. Now at that point it should be light. So what it suggests is you get it to that point and then adjust the cam so you can just pull it out. I tell you it's quite hard to adjust. There, so now I've got light. Once you think you've set it, then back it off a bit more. So that's another half a millimetre. Then it's tight again. So come around with a little bit of tension on the paper. There, it's just gone light. So that is the best I've had it so far on one take. Uh, that's ignoring all the other takes I've had before. So let's just try that again, back it off. As it approaches the 50 or at 50, the paper should get light there. So 
that's not too bad. I think I'm going to call that it. So at that point, you then need to tap that cam back in. So I'm going to just push it back in for a moment. Uh, you're meant to put a tube over here and then give it a good tap to press that back down. And there you go, that is still relatively tight. There. Can't move it there. There, it's gone light. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so this is going quite well. I'm quite pleased the timing wasn't that bad. Um, it only took about three or four attempts maybe. So I've now tapped the uh, contact breaker cam back in place. I found that a big size spark plug uh, socket worked quite well and the rubber insert actually protects the bearing surfaces as well. So that's what I used to tap it back on in place. So now we've just, we've, so now we've just got to carry on rebuilding. So the next thing we need to put on is the flywheel. So with this being magnetic, just make sure you've got no debris in there before you put it in place. So I've got wood pigeons. Thank you. So I'm happy that both surfaces are clean. This is the correct one, yep. There it is. So that's located nicely. Okay, let's bolt that up. So, big washer to put the washer over. And then put that nut, it has actually got a recess that should go down. Okay, that feels okay. I'm going to um, just tighten this up downstairs in my garage and then I'll come back to you. So the next bit we're going to put on is the uh, clutch. That should just slide on. There we go. And then we're going to put the cover plate on. Okay, so I'm not really happy with how that's fitting back on here and I think these, uh, this edge here is um, catching one of the washers on top of the bearing in here. So I'm just going to have a look at that before I go any further. Okay, so I've just left out one of those shims. I think that will make it better. Okay, nut. Okay, so that works loads better.
okay that's better so next thing we need to do is look at the head and rebuilding the decompressor valve in the head so I've just had to zoom in to this because it's so small that's the uh, hole where the decompressor goes and that is the little valve there so that just simply pops in there if you want to you can actually use grinding paste and just put a uh, screwdriver in that little slot to grind it in but I think it will be alright this one so the next thing to do is quite awkward is to put the spring come here put the spring over that then you've got to somehow manage to screw that face down onto that okay so just as I was trying to do the decompressor up I noticed the uh, spring was nearly coil bound and if I look at the other one the spring is a lot lighter gauge so uh, I'm actually going to use this one here okay so it's a little bit of a uh, learning on the job if you tighten this up fully and you'll find that uh, the spring is nearly coil bound in which case the valve well, it's not opening at all so I think what you need to do is just back that off and allow the valve to open a couple of millimeters there is probably a dimension you should have set that to but there you go it is opening now all right as long as you don't have it opening too far such that it would hit the piston as it came up I can't see that being a problem okay so the decompressor is now tightened up and I've got about two millimeters of travel on the valve now I've done that it's time to put the head back on okay so it's a new day I ended up rushing things yesterday um, it was getting late um, the camera battery nearly died and then the SD card was full anyway so I had to kind of give in so the last thing I was doing was um, fixing the head there's nothing hard about that but don't forget you've got a little bracket where the um, decompressor valve goes so make sure you put that on copper washer bracket then the allen head bolt um, so all that leaves me to do is put the inlet manifold on and then the exhaust so I'm now going to do that and that's this engine complete so there really isn't much to this I'm having to reuse the gaskets because I couldn't find any more so gasket and then the inlet manifold on first then you've got one bolt to put in at this end here and without losing the gasket and take the two studs and the long end goes in first I'm going to put it in there so it uh, lines up the gasket that is seven millimeters again Now that we've got that in place we need to do this uh, bracket here onto the side and that is the slightly longer one okay and now we can put the exhaust back on um, gotta put another gasket on this face here put the exhaust on which loops this way make sure there's a gasket underneath that pipe if you've still got your pipe and that should go on somewhere there there we go and that's got obviously two nuts but it also needs to uh, fairly large diameter um, star washers eleven millimeters on these oh, star washer I lost it there it is so before we tighten up that exhaust we just want to make sure this is all lining up here which I don't think it was there we go that's better so tighten those up ok 
Okay, yep, they look okay. Let's put them on that one. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's a good nip up on that one. Okay, so they look okay. Uh, so the last bit to do here is just put that bracket back in place. It should actually go either side, that's probably why I was struggling. There we go. It should go either side of that hole. So that's the engine fully rebuilt. The carburetor is still on the bike with all the uh, cables still attached. Uh, the only thing I found wrong with this engine was the flywheel had slipped on the contact breaker cam and that would have caused uh, the magneto to be out of phase with the contact breaker maybe. I don't really know. Um, but I definitely wasn't getting the spark that I should have at the right point. So the next thing for me to do is put this back in the bike connect up the carburetor and see if it works. So thank you for watching if you've got this far. Um, I've had two quite long videos, the strip down and the rebuild. I hope you found them enjoyable and have learned something from them. Um, please subscribe because I will be doing some more videos about my little Mobilette X1. Thank you for watching.